Good morning and welcome members, partners, and friends to the live broadcast of Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide. We stand strong in faith with you and your family. So remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. We believe that there will be great manifestations, including signs and wonders during the service. So get your expectations high because one word from God can change your life forever. If this is your first time with us, we say welcome, welcome, and welcome again. And know you are not here by accident or invite alone, but allow the Holy Spirit to show you why as you worship with us this morning. So get ready for a powerful praise and worship from members of our anointed praise team and the anointed word from our pastor. Now get your Bibles, let your friends and families know it's time for Sunday worship service. Welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we just come into your presence today, Lord, with thanksgiving, Lord. And into your courts with praise, Father God. We bless your name, we praise your name, Father God, because you are indeed more than worthy, Father God. Worthy is such a mundane word. It's a, it's a word that we use, Father God, but we don't even begin, we don't even know, Lord, how to connect it with you, Lord, when we say worthy, but it's the best word that we have, Lord, to describe you, Father God. You're worthy, you're wonderful, Father God. You're righteous, you're holy, Father God. And because of your son, Jesus, who lives in us as we live in him, we are those things also. Uh, thank you, Lord, for considering us worthy, even though in and of ourselves, we're, we're not, Father God. I was reading something this morning, and um, it talked about being humble. Humble is thinking less about you and more about others. And the analogy that they gave was that if you take all of our parts as people, all of our human parts, we're worth about five dollars. Wow. And so, if you, if you boil us down to nothing, we're worth about five dollars. Wow. <laughs> and so, yeah, the flesh is worth about five dollars. And so, when you're driving your luxury car, it's five dollars driving a luxury car. When you wear your designer clothes, it's five dollars. Wear designer clothes. Wow. And it's just like kind of boarded down when you got your designer purse. It's you know, five dollars worth carrying a designer purse. When you live in that big house, that big mansion on the hill, it's five dollars worth of you. Your house is worth more than you are. Your car is worth more than you are. Your, your designer bag is worth more than you are. But you, Lord, tell us that we're worthy. So even with this $5, it's the best $5, Father God, that we'll ever be because of you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence, thanking you for Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide. You have called us to be saints in Wilmington, Delaware, and around the world. As we lift our voices, in one accord, we recognize that you are God and everything was made by and for you. We call into being those things that be not as though they were. We thank you, Father God, that we all speak the same thing. There are no divisions, no schisms among us. We are perfectly joined together in the same mind. Grant unto us, Father God, our Holy Ghost boldness to speak your word, which you will confirm with signs following, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for increase in this ministry. We declare that each service is overflowing, Father God, standing room only, Father God, with people who are the unsaved, the untaught, the uncommitted, the unchurched, and those who hunger and thirst after your righteousness, Lord. 
We call those families who have been sent by you to be loved by you through us. At this church, we speak the truth in love. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we have everything we need to carry out your great commission and reach the city of Wilmington, Delaware, and surrounding areas for Jesus. We are a people of love, yes. as love is shed abroad in our hearts yes. by your Holy Spirit, Father God. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that the word of God is living big in us, and Jesus is absolutely Lord. Now, I need y'all to repeat after me. We are, we are a supernatural church, a supernatural church. Uh, composed of supernatural people. Composed of supernatural people. Doing supernatural things. Doing supernatural things. But we are co-laborers. We are co-laborers. Together with God. Together with God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Among us. Among us. And we lift our hands. And we lift our hands. And praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, <laughs> 
Diana of Judah. Sometimes 
words fail us that we have to say, oh! Sometimes words fail us, we just say, oh!
He was wounded so I could be healed. He took the pain so I arrived in good health. Thank you, Lord, for that name of Jesus. Father, we allow the Holy Spirit to move through us today. And we're thanking that this is a service that you have ordained. We're blessed to be in it. Now speak in our hearts today, Holy Spirit. Teach us. Because this week, there are great blessings. There may be obstacles, but we will have victory over all of them. Because we have a Savior, and his name is Jesus. So we submit to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And you should, if you're sitting at home, you should just clap your hands. Praise his name. Glory be to God because he's worthy to be praised. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Some of y'all need a praise a thorn. Amen. House is too dull. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's get right into the word this morning. We'll take offering at the end. Let's get into the word today. Glory be to God. You know, the Lord gave me this, he revealed to me, he said, son, I want you to preach on that victory is our business. And uh, when I heard that, you know how you hear something, you just say, that sounds good. But the Lord impressed upon me, no, it don't sound good, it is good. Victory is your business. Glory be to God. So we're here because victory is our business. You're on your job because victory is your business. Yes. You get assaulted and maybe people treat you unfairly, but it doesn't matter because victory is your business. <laughs> they may even treat you wrong and talk about you, backstab you, try to do things to you, but it doesn't matter. Victory is your business. You always come out on top. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. And I know you guys have, you got your iPads, you got, you got everything. So if I go to Amplify, you can pop right over there. But let's be old school for a moment. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, 57. It says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, I love that scripture. Now look at the Amplified version of this. It says, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory, maketh us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you read 1 Corinthians 15 and you read down the scriptures, we use that scriptures a lot when, when we're dealing with going home services because it talks about that because of Jesus, we have victory over sin and death. But the, what I like to focus on is that we, be, we, we are victorious. Jesus, he gives us the victory. Look at Romans 8.31. Romans 8.31. He says, what shall then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He freely, if that, if that don't sound like victory, I don't know what sounds like victory. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you look at the message translation in Romans 8.31, it says, so what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? How can you lose? Pastor, you don't know what I'm facing, but how can you lose? Nothing can defeat you. I'll say that again. Nothing can defeat you while you're on this earth unless you allow it to defeat you. Because, because that's all you're doing. You're allowing the sickness to defeat you instead of you taking authority over it. Don't shout me out because, you know what I'm saying? I understand what the doctor says, but victory is your business. Glory be to God. If you look at 1 John 5, verse 4. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Come on, say that with me. Victory is my business. You know, you understand? Let's look at the Amplified translation of this. It says, it says, who is that? Who is it that is victorious over that conquers the world? Now, now listen carefully. COVID-19 is in the world. Cancer is in the world. High blood pressure is in the world. Lack of poverty is in the world. Struggling is in the world. Drama is in the world. 
But who is that is victorious over the and conquers the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, who adheres to trust him and relies on that fact. What facts are you relying on? I rely on the truth that victory is our business, that victory is God's business, and victory is my business. Come on, say that with me out loud while you're sitting at home. Victory is our business. Victory is God's business. Victory is my business. Then you see, when you got when you got victory on your mind, you don't be talking negative. You, you don't be talking more about what the world says. You be talking about what God says. Glory be to God. See, if you're interested in victory, you're interested in God. And he's definitely interested in you. See, religion... <laughs> has a tendency not to be interested in victory. They preach too much about what ain't going to work instead of what will work. It keeps telling you sometimes, well, you know, some of us, you know, God ain't going to answer everybody concerning healing. When Jesus died, the victory, we have victory in healing all the time. You understand? <laughs> See, if we listen to the world, we'll think our kids will never be able to walk better than us. But victory is our, birth, is our business. Because he says your seed will not beg bread. Your seed will not go, <laughs> your seed will not suffer anything that you went through. Because victory is your business. Glory be God. Look at Ephesians 6.10. He says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, this is a powerful scripture. We're supposed to always be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Notice, we're, 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 listen carefully. I'm ministering a lot on confirming why victory is our business. And what God wants you to be able to do is check yourself this week when you speak defeat, when you question God, when you speak facts more than you speak truth. You know, it's easy. The facts could be over 500,000 people have died of COVID, but it doesn't matter with me because a thousand will fall at one side, 10,000 the other, but victory is my business. I will not be one of those that die. You see, because my, it's an attitude adjustment. Glory be to God. Pastor, you can't say that because anybody can, you know, anybody can die, but I, I'm not anybody. I'm a child of God. You understand? I'm not like the heathen. I pray for them. I want them to see that they have a savior, but victory is my business. Glory be to God. See, when you recognize this, this is why you have a ministry. This is why God put you on jobs with a lot of heathen and you take persecution because he wants to prove that victory is your business. You were sent there to have victory. You were sent there so they could see the hand of God and the power of God in your life. Look at Matthew 8. I'm going to look at verse 1. Come on, take your Bibles. Let's go. In Matthew 8, verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See if thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Now notice this, that the leper, this leper had, I've ministered on this a lot, but he had pure faith in Jesus and his healing power. See, last teaching, I told you that our faith is based on knowledge. So that means we have to have knowledge of you said, of our victory concerning sickness. See, leprosy was a terrifying disease because there was no known cure for it. Sounds familiar with a lot of things, that there are no more cure, no cure for it. You understand? You understand? Well, we still haven't found a cure for the common cold. You understand what I'm saying? See, when there's a cure, that means it can't attack you no more. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, well, yeah we have vaccines and medicine, but that, can, that still is, is not enough through science to stop that from attacking us. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. See, I look for a cure. You know what the cure is? It's that it's permanent. Hallelujah. Just like the leper, we have to use the faith that overcomes the world and we get it done. Glory be to God. Matthew 24, 35 says something that I know many of you are familiar with. So turn there. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. See, everything in this world is temporary. Let me tell you, if you're going through some financial problems, they're temporary. If you're going through some strife in your family, it's temporary. If you're going through some sickness, it's temporary. It's subject to change. Why? Because, because the one in your heart and his words will never pass away. Jesus will never pass away, nor God's words will pass away. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let's go back to Ephesians 6.10. I'm going to read from the Amplified. It says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which is boundless might provide. We have, we have put aside, we have to put aside what the world thinks. We have to put aside what the world thinks. We have to focus on our connection with God and have faith in his power. Glory be to God. That overcomes the world. Don't go anywhere because I'm talking about having faith in his power that overcomes the world. See, <laughs> there's, there's a difference here. Glory be God. Turn to Ephesians 3, 6, 3, 20. Come on, don't, don't, don't lose me. Because we need to have faith in his power. Come on, say that with me. I have faith in his power. Say it again. I have faith in his power. Glory be to God. Look at Ephesians 3.20. This is a scripture we're familiar with now. Unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Praise God. That's a powerful scripture. Amen? Yeah, powerful. See, the leper knew Jesus was good, but he also knew his power was strong. I'll say that again. The leper knew Jesus was good. But he also knew that Jesus' power was stronger than anything he'd ever seen before. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The leper was reaching out with faith that the power of Jesus was more than enough to handle any incurable disease. So let's look at it. There's a difference between the goodness of God and the power of God. Turn to, turn to Psalm 3119. Matter of fact, no, let's go to Nahum 17. N A H U M. I know y'all look at that scripture all the time. Let's go to Nahum 17. It says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who take refuge in him. Notice it says the Lord is good. Look at Psalm 3119. David says, how great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you have wrought for those who take refuge in you before the sons of God. See, we know God is good. I remember some years ago, there was a young man and he was... He always used to talk about how good his father was. My dad was the best dad there was. Man, my dad was good. Oh, man. Well, he had a need. He, he and his wife had a situation where they needed $10,000. And they needed it desperately. And so he was talking about, I said, well, did you talk to your father? He said, well, my father's unable to do that because my father's on Social Security. He's not going to be able to help me. Even though his father was good, he still didn't have enough to help him. He still didn't have enough to get him out of his situation. See, your God is good, but God is also powerful. You need to, you need to never doubt his mighty power to work in you. See, many of us, we know he's good, but then, then uh, diabetes comes. We forget he's powerful. 
we know he's good, but all of a sudden your finances get low and you forget he's powerful. You can quote how good he is, but your children act like they're, they're possessed and you forget how powerful he is. So, you, so we have to have faith in his power just like we have to have faith in his goodness. Glory be to God. When you put your focus, whatever you put your focus is, is what you'll draw from him. So if I put my focus on his power, that's what I'm going to draw. If I put my focus on his goodness, that's what I'm going to draw. So if you need the power of God, you understand, and to manifest, you got to focus on the power. You must see him as the powerful one as well as the good one. His power is far greater. Now I'm going to make a statement. and You better write it down. His power is far greater than his goodness. Glory be to God. Look at 1 Corinthians 6.14. His power is greater than his goodness. Who glory be to God. Well, oh, Pastor, you can't say that. Well, then <laughs> listen to the scriptures. First Corinthians 6, 14. And God hath both raised us up, the Lord, and all, will also raise us up by his own power. Glory be to God. <laughs> Matter of fact, let, let me read the Passion Translation with this. It says... It says, now the God who raised up our Lord from the grave will awaken and raise us up through his mighty power. The same power that raised Jesus up from the dead is the same power that will heal you. The same power that will deliver you. Glory be to God. Look at uh, Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah 32, 17. Oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out thy arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. This young man I gave the testimony about, he felt his natural father couldn't provide the $10,000 because it was too hard for him. And even though he quoted every day how good his father was, but let me tell you, there's nothing too hard for our God. I can trust in his power. Glory be to God, as well as his goodness. You understand? And I hear believers do it all the time. You talk how good he is, then you then you then, then you get caught up in the sickness and you then you question his power. You talk how good he is, then your finances go bad, and you question his power. Because you try to figure out how to get out of your situations. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say this with me. I'm focused on his power. Some of you listen to me today. You need his power. You already know he's good. But you need his power to heal that marriage. You need his power to get you out of this situation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. His power is far greater than his goodness. Do you know that God can do anything for you? There is nothing he won't do for you. Do you know God's power to perform is beyond man's ability? Spiritually, physically, and financially? Don't limit yourself on God's ability in your life. Trust in his power. You know, you can tell someone, they talk about how good he is, and because they don't have a, um, a college degree, they don't believe they have enough power. God wouldn't give them the power to be successful. You understand? Because you question, he's good, but I'm not, I'm not qualified enough. No, with his power, you are more than qualified. You, you can do more than enough. Glory be to God. Turn to 2 Timothy 3.1. 2 Timothy 3.1. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power. And you should be thinking, thank you for your power. Let's focus on his power today. In 2 Timothy 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And you better preach, we are in the last days. Look at the amplified of this. It says, But understand this that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Here, you know, here Paul is speaking to Timothy about these days that will be hard to deal with and hard to bear. And many times we go through these situations. They're hard to deal with. They're hard to bear. 
Lord be to God. I mean, this, this COVID and this pandemic is making it that it's hard to deal with, hard to bear. People are sitting at home almost going stir crazy. You understand? Because this is hard to deal with. It's hard to bear. I'm tired of, of, of being on, of watching Zoom and doing these type of things. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you're tired of sitting at home and having church, you need to come and come with us and have church because there's power. You understand? Glory be to God. Well, well, <laughs> Luke one thirty seven says, for with God, nothing is impossible. And although the times may be hard to bear, they're not impossible to bear because with God, nothing is impossible. And because nothing is impossible, I can trust in his power. When the kingdom of darkness applies pressure to believers, the outcome is deliverance and multiplication. Every time the devil attacks you, the outcome is supposed to be victorious. It's supposed to be deliverance. And it's supposed to be multiplication, increase. See, the devil, now I'm going to say something that most of you have difficulty with, which if you have a religious thinking, the devil is terrified of God's people. He's afraid of them. He shakes at their feet when they, when they, when they, when they put their faith in God's power, when they put their faith in his goodness. He's terrified of you. Even in the old covenant he was. In uh, Joshua 2. Verse 9. Y'all building something here. Victory is our business. In Joshua 2, verse 9, and she said unto the men, and we're talking, and, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Rahab is talking to the Israelites. Look, she's saying, when the inhabitants heard of the the works God had done for the Israelites, they were scared. When they heard about the power working through them. You know, God wants you to be on your job that people say, man, I wouldn't mess with her. Man, it's something, man, when you mess with her, things just don't go right for us. Glory be to God. You know, you need to watch talking about her because the last person talked about her, we ain't seen them no more. Glory be to God. I wouldn't say that about them. They ain't supposed to be, the devil's supposed to be terrified. <laughs> they were terrified of the Israelites. And when God's people lived, had lived in Egypt, look at what Pharaoh said, Exodus 1, 9. <laughs> Let your fingers do the walking. Exodus 1, 9. He said to his people, Behold, the Israelites are too many and too mighty for us, and they outnumber us both in people and in strength. Here's the king talking about this. And actually, he said, they outnumber us in people and in strength. Whose strength did they have? They had the strength of the Lord. You have to remember, they were slaves. <laughs> and the king was scared of them. Sounds familiar, though. They, the king was scared of them as slaves. He said, they're outnumbering us. Man, there's just too many of us. And they have strength. It wasn't because they were more than us. They had strength. They have power. Glory be to God. Look at Exodus 1. See, this is, matter of fact, this is a true statement today. You understand? The more, uh, the more Pharaoh put pressure on the Israelites, the more the Israelites multiplied. And they just spread a call, spread a ball. In um, Exodus 1 9, it said, He said to his people, Behold, I'm reading it again. The Israelites are too many and too mighty for us. And they outnumber us both in people and in strength. <laughs> it just gets me excited hearing about it. Pharaoh even decided to slaughter the babies to stop the growth. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kill the babies. It happened in a country in America where culture was just exceeding. And they said, we need, we need to, we gotta start, we gotta start killing the, we, you know, we have to stop the growth. We have to stop the growth of them. You understand? We, we need to stop the growth. So they legalized abortion so they could stop the growth. Because there was a certain people of color that was multiplying too much. They were afraid of it. Sounds like the enemy to me. Lord, this ain't politics. This is truth. They were afraid. So they, they had to come up with something. <laughs> so we got to stop the multiplication of them. So let's come up with let's come up with abortion. And we're going to make sure abortion is available 
in their communities and it won't cost them anything because we need to stop the growth. Well, that's what, the, that's what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh said, I gotta stop the growth. So what did he do? We're gonna kill him. We're gonna murder him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Come on, say victory is my business. <laughs> Glory be to God, hallelujah. <laughs> and so look at Ephesians 1.20. Look what God did. So God was good to the midwives and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more. God was like, <laughs> you can't overcome them. You know what God did? He just had them multiply, multiply, multiply. Why? Because they put their attention on God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Say that with me. Victory is my business. Glory be to God. You know, when true believers are pressured, increase occurs. When we get pressured and when people try to con us and take advantage of us, increase, you understand, is ours. You understand, increase happens with us. And the, say this with me, the devil's scared of me. I know it's hard for some of you to say, but he's scared of me. <laughs> when he know, when I trust his word and trust what God says and put my faith in his power, he's scared of me. Glory be to Why do you think he's so deceptive? Why do you think he tries to deceive you? Why? Because victory is your business. <laughs> Let's look at Peter. He preached his first sermon. <laughs> and when he preached his first sermon, 3,000 souls were saved. Now we're talking about Peter <laughs> who turned his back on Jesus. And Jesus' mercy and grace. You know what I'm saying? He, he, Jesus like, I've already forgiven you. You got a ministry. And if we look at Acts 2.41. Come on. Then they gladly received his word, were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You need to read the entire Acts 2. Jesus, Peter's just preaching up a storm. And guess what? In one day, 3,000 souls were added to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There was power, you understand, <laughs> that was moving on God's people. Look at verse 33. And we're going to read verse 33 to 35. Come on, just, just roll with me a moment. Glory to God. This, we, we, we serve a powerful God. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in the prison. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong scripture. Let's look at verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Thank you for great grace. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of these things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet in distribution was made unto every man according as he had me. The power was so strong that they couldn't stop the increase, but they couldn't stop the prosperity. <coughs> they prospered so much. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> they prospered so much that as they got increased, they divided it among the apostles and told the apostles, hey, somebody's lacking. Make sure they have increased. Boy, that's great power that gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. Come on, say that would be great power. Glory be to God. Great power. See, this was a sign that they couldn't stop because people were just increasing. And, and you know, it's awesome when believers are concerned about other believers who aren't prospering. It's awesome when that happens, when believers are concerned. Yeah, I'm concerned about my sister. My sister's going through. And I have problems with that. And they gave it to the apostles and said, you deem fit, you bless the people in our, in our ministry. We've been blessed that we have people like that in the church. They'll, they'll give an extra offer to pass them as they deem fit. Make sure we got food for them. Glory be to God. We want to make sure that nobody who's a believer lack in any good thing. That's the power of God. Ooh, glory. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, and so many souls were being saved that the city officials forbade Peter from preaching about Jesus. Man, they had so many. The city was like a revival. It was an awakening. 
So they, they imprisoned Peter. They said, you know what? You ain't going to stop preaching. We're going to put you in prison. And if we go to Acts 12, I want you to take a look at this. And we're going to look at verse 4. Just because you're doing right, sometimes bad things happen. But because victory is your business, you're still going to come out on top. And in Acts 12, 4, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarters of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. They must have been really afraid of Peter. <laughs> they got four squads of four soldiers each, and if that's not enough, they fastened chains between Peter and two soldiers. They were terrified that Peter might escape. They were afraid. Go to Acts 12, verse 7. Look, come on, look with me. Don't tell me the devil ain't terrified of you. Don't tell me when you're on target and you're following what God wants to do that the devil, he, he doesn't know what to do with you. Glory be to God. He's afraid of you. And he, the people who follow him are afraid of you. And if we look at verse 7, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Verse 9. <laughs> and he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But thought he saw a vision. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Notice the gate opened on its own accord. Glory. And they went out and passed on to one street, and forthwith the angel departed. Look carefully. What did Peter do while while, while he was shackled? While he was while he was while he was shackled to the chains, he slept. He slept so soundly that the angel had to strike him to wake him up. Glory be to God. She had to move him. He was sleeping that soundly. Why? Because he had cast all the cares onto God. He was trusting in the power of God. <clears throat> that he was sleeping soundly. He wasn't up walking, walking around. He was sleeping soundly. Glory be to God. And you know, <laughs> When doing great persecution, Peter did not fear or complain. He slept like a baby. How many, when's the last time you slept like a baby? When's the last time in the midst of your problems, somebody had to wake you up because you were sleeping that good? This was happening with Peter. Glory be to God. See, this is trust. Isaiah 26, 3, he said, he says, when your mind is focused on him, your trust is in him. Glory be to God. <laughs> and Isaiah, let me pull that out for you. Isaiah 26, 3. Notice what it says here. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Peter had perfect peace. Why? Because his mind stayed on me. He trusted in God. He trusted no matter all, all these chains you got, everything you got. He not only slept, when the angel wakened him, the, the guards were still asleep. He got up, glory be to God, and he got out, glory be to God, hallelujah, woo, glory. That is, that's, this is God's pattern for those who put their trust in God alone. You could be attacked, things could look wrong, but he has a pattern for your victory. He wants you to trust in him, cast your care on him. He, he says, I don't need you up all night worrying about this problem, worrying about your children. Go on to sleep. I promise you in the book of Psalms, I'll give you sweet sleep. And you ain't got to worry about it because when the time arrives, they're going to know that my hand is on your side. See, many of you have ministries and gifts and calling, and it's time now to arise. 
You understand? This is our finest hour right now. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the COVID and the strains, you understand? Listen to me carefully. <laughs> Things aren't going to get that much better in the world. They're going to get worse. No, no government, no president can deliver us. You understand? We need Jesus. You see, understand? Jesus is the only answer to all the issues we're facing today. There are no other answers. Science doesn't have the answers. Jesus has the answers. And if you make a habit of listening to the, to the world's voice, you understand, more than you listen to God, you're not going to embrace his awesome power. You understand? <laughs> and you're not going to see what he's doing in this earth. There's a revival going on like you've never seen before. But if you're listening too much into what the world says, you'll miss this revival. It'll come right by your house. And you'll miss it because you're too focused on the world when you know victory is your business. Glory, those things in the world are not supposed to have that much of an influence in you trusting God. Glory be to God. See, it's deception. And the only reason the devil works diligently to keep you focused on what's going on in the world because he's afraid of you. He's deceiving you. Victory is our business. Victory is our business. There's a power of God. I'm going to say something to those of you. You listen to me carefully. Don't, don't take this the wrong way. But listen, if we, can, if we can go to work now and leave our homes, Lord, we can come to church and get in the presence of God. If we can go to the stores and buy food, we can come to church and be in the presence of God. We are essential. We are not, the world says we are not essential. We are essential. I'm talking to those of you and that may be afraid. What are you afraid of? We, <laughs> we got God's presence here. Victory is our business. Glory be to God. If the shoe fit, don't wear it. But we need, to, we need to take a step boldly. This is our finest hour. This is the time people are supposed to see God on the throne. And he's supposed to see it through you. Glory be to God. Don't be concerned or distracted by the opposition. Instead, stay focused on God's word. And you understand? And, and, and you have to work. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. And let me tell you, he, he's afraid of you. How do we not resist him? My sister was talking in the praise and worship team about how humbling with him. You, you, I just, you know what humble truly is? I just trust you more than I trust myself. I trust you more than I trust any man. I'm just going to follow what you say. And I'm going to have the victory in everything I do. Oh, this is, this is, it's an attitude, not an arrogance. We have an attitude. When we fall, we shall arise. When we sit in darkness, the God's light will be, his light will be. Even if I make a mistake, he'll deliver me out of that situation. Because my God is with me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. See, when our eyes are fixed on Jesus and his delivering power, the enemy may attack, but we'll escape without a scratch. He may come like he came with Pharaoh. And Moses tried to talk to him. You need to let my people go, man. You don't know what you're messing with. Glory be to God, you need to let them go. <laughs> Moses wrote Psalm 91. We're under the secret place of the Most High. That's who wrote Psalm 91. We're under the secret place of the Most High. You understand? We're protected by God. You understand? The question comes, who do you believe? Whose report do you believe? Glory be to God. Let's close, let's close here and look at Hebrews 10, verse 39. It says, but we are certainly, matter of fact, let me, let me open up my Bible again. Make sure I quote it correctly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I believe in your power today. Glory. But we are not of them who draw back unto prediction, 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 but of them that believe in the saving of the soul. See, we're among those who have faith you understand, and we we don't we and we believe we believe in true life. We believe we have victory all the time. We're not like some of those who are held back because they're afraid that they're going to perish, that they're going to die. We're not caught up with what the world says. We're caught up with what God says. You understand? Because victory is our business. Our job is to believe in the power of God because we already know He's good. It was His goodness that sent His Son. Lord be God, but it was his power that raised him from the dead. 
And my job is to know my God is good, but believe in his power. Glory be to God, hallelujah. You may be, some of you are facing, you know, since the COVID's come out, all types of sickness has come out. People are being attacked with sickness like never before outside of COVID. And people are dying. And, we, and, and we have to recognize that we have victory over every sickness. The question comes, whose report you're going to believe? Am I going to believe what God says? The Bible said in Psalms, he sent his word to heal you and deliver you out of all destruction. Are you spending time, are you dedicated to his word? Are you studying to show thyself approved of workmen? Man, this, is our, this is our work. I'm a workman. I gotta know my I gotta know my trade. I have to spend time. It's in material whether you went to college or whether you graduated from the fourth grade. You understand? This is your book. This is what you have to diligently seek. Family struggling financially. Let me go in the book. People are dealing with sickness. Let me go in the book. Let me find out what the book says because I'm going to have victory over this. This stuff in the world is already defeated because victory is victory is the most important thing for me. I need to look at the book. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You have to get to the point that you trust this book more than you trust yourself. That you trust the promises that he has for you. <coughs> at all. And that's, that's the power that we have. So, as I was saying, many are being attacked with all types of sickness that aren't COVID because the devil has put so much fear that people start believing in the fear and he's, we're giving him place. It's time to shut him down. It's time to let him know. Your time is up. No sickness will defeat me because victory is my business. I'm going to trust in his power <laughs> more than I'm going to trust in, trust in his Elive or or the medicine. Thank God for the medicine. But I, I need a healer. I need a deliver. Thank God for the vaccine, but I need a healer. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with the vaccine, but I need a healer. I need something to cure me. And the only cure is Jesus and his blood. Glory be to God. And you better be listening to me today, because otherwise you're going to sit at home, come all caught up because of COVID and feeling bad about yourself and beating yourself down. But there is no fear. Notice what he says. <laughs> you understand? He's given us not the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I, I got the power. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So let's, you know, we've been taking communion every day, every past two weeks. We're going to take communion now. No, I'm not. The Holy Spirit said we stop at this moment. Glory be to God. Where's my communion? We're going to take communion. Glory. It's, t it's time for us to walk in the power. Amen. You understand? It's time for us to walk in this power. You could be a part of Wilmington Christian Center Church and part of our partners. You need to go on our webpage. The Lord gave us a word to take communion for two weeks. Well, Pastor, I ain't took it the last week, but you can start now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You understand? <laughs> and we, because why are we taking it? It puts us in remembrance of the power ooh, of God that's in our life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. So while you're sitting there, go grab you a cup of water and a piece of bread. You understand? You know, Holy, holy Communion is not a ritual to be observed, but a blessing to be received. Because it's not a ritual, there's no prescribed bread or special drink required. Jesus just used what was there available, which was bread and wine. He didn't say you had to use bread and wine. He used what was available. And what was available, maybe to you, maybe some Gatorade and some crackers. That's okay. <laughs> Let's use it today. Glory be to God. Oh, yeah. Victory is our business.
Come on, get your loved ones. Get you, get, get it together. I'm giving you a little time. Pull it together. Get you a cup. And you should take communion with your kids. Parents, that's your responsibility. My job is not to teach them about communion. That's your job. Hallelujah. Sometimes just to quell the storm. You say, we're taking communion today. Glory be to God. My mom used to give us cod liver oil every day when we went out. We had to open up our mouth, take the cod liver oil, and um, eat an orange. She said, it's good for you. But you know what's better? Communion. It's good for you. And you know, <laughs> me and my sisters, and we, we, we were never out sick like everybody else. That cod liver oil and that spring cleaning my mama did kept us, you know, we walked in, we walked in health naturally. But let me tell you, we can walk in health spiritually and naturally through the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. I'm going to read Jeremiah 33, 6. It says, Behold, I will bring in health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Here God is talking. I will bring health and a cure. He was talking about this, a prophecy about Jesus. I will bring in, in, bring in health and a cure, and I will cure them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And we will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. That's what we're doing when we take a communion. Who thank you, Lord? He cures us. He heals us. Glory be to God. Please, people, don't lose focus and you can put your trust in science. Thank God for science and the things they've got, but they can't cure. They can't heal. You understand? <laughs> I know the doctor, when some translation said the healer, but every doctor will tell you they're not the healer. They'll tell you the heartbeat, I'm not the heal. You understand? Even though the word doctor in many translations means healer, there is only one healer. Yeah. Woo! That's Jesus. The blood of Jesus. It's God who's our healer. So I want you to hold this up. Listen to me carefully. We're going to trust in his power. You should be sick and tired of defeat in any manner. That's because you haven't focused on his power. Come on, say this with me. I say, I not only focus on his goodness, but I focus on his power. His power is greater than his goodness. Yeah, I proved it in the script. His power is greater than his goodness. And you, some of us need his power. Ooh, glory be to God. As well as his good. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness and your power. I want you to lift this up. And I want you to repeat this with me. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your son. By the stripes that fell on his back, my body is healed from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. Every cell, every organ, every function of my body is now healed, restored, and renewed. In addition, I receive revelation knowledge of my relationship with you as your child. Understanding my steps today are ordered by you and I receive right now your wisdom, unmerited favor, promotion, mercy, and supernatural increase in every area of my life as I recognize and give thanks for your goodness towards me. I decree this by faith and trust in you and your promises in Jesus' name. Let's eat the bread. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now take your cup. I don't care if it's water, Gatorade, apple juice, orange juice, it's a material. And I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your present, your precious blood. You're sin free, disease free, poverty free, life that is in your blood. 
as and your, and your shed blood has removed every sin, every mistake from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven of all my sins, past, present, and future, and made completely righteous. Today, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and provision. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. Thank you for your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Drink the cup. Hallelujah. 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 I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be God. Say it one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be God. There's something about the blood of Jesus. Glory be God. This is a good time to take offering right now. Amen. I mean, we're, we're sin free, poverty free. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Disease free. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. So as we give offering today, I need you to focus on his power. Glory be to God. And if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Malachi. I just want you to look at this. The scripture says in Deuteronomy that God gives you the power to get wealth. I'm, 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 I, he, he says he gives you the power to get wealth. Well, it's his power that's in you. But he gives you the power to get wealth. Oh, victory is my business. Hallelujah. <laughs> Someone said it would be victory is my business. So, <laughs> thank you, Father. So in Malachi, and I'm, I'm talking to some of you who doubt God's word. And um, we as believers, we tithe. We live off 90, not 10%. The devil's so afraid of it, he came up with this theology that tithing was under the old covenant. That's a lie. Tithing happened with Abraham. Abraham came before Moses. Abraham came before the Lord. And, and part of the law was to tithe. Jesus tithed because he was under the law. But see, Jesus didn't tithe the way the Israelites tithed. He tithed according to the seed of Abraham. He tithed because God was worthy. He didn't want no man, no job to ever say they blessed him. He wanted people to know. Abraham wanted to know. He said, I'm prospering because my God is taking care of me. So in Malachi 3, 10, it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That sounds like power to me. Woo He's going to pour you out a blessing. There's a blessing for your tithe that doesn't come from the seed, from just sowing seed. He said, I'm going to pour you out a blessing so people see my power for you to get wealth. Glory be to God. And notice he says in verse 11, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast the fruit before time in the field, say the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightfulest land, said the Lord of hosts. Now I'm pointing up here, this is the power of God working because you've decided to give him 10% of whatever he comes in. Amen. It's a choice. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, every day there's blessing and cursing. Choose life so both you and your seed shall live. Many of us may be living in the seed of our parents, of the choices of our parents. Well, you know, we've been struggling financially. Well, maybe that was your parents' issue, but it shouldn't be your issue. I've been, I've been working for a living. Maybe you came like me. My family worked for a living. But see, I'm learning how to work. I, I'm following Ephesians 4, 29. I'm working for a gift. See, if he places me on a job in a secular, it's for people to see God in me. And mess around, they're going to pay me anyway. And I'm going to take 10% and give it to God and let him take care of things that are needed. 
I'm preaching here to some of you because you're wondering, you know, you got this religious thought in you. You know, you want to prosper, but you don't want to do the things the word tells you to do. And I'm telling you, it's not going to work. Because when pressure comes, you're going to go back to what you trust. And if you trust in the government and the job and all those things, when the pressure comes, that's where you go. You'll be thinking, I got to get it. I got to go in and put overtime instead of turning to the Lord and giving joy that he's going to take care of this situation. So I'm taking this time to teach to you because we got to stop struggling financially. Amen. This is not God. It's immaterial whether you're just living off a social security check, a pension check. He can, we, we were supposed to have more than enough. And it comes from our trust in him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we give today, we're not going to give grudgingly. I'm not, I don't want you to give because you feel pressure. I want you to give because you love the Lord. And he's been good to you. That's what worship is. Worship is when you strip yourself down naked almost. And then you naked you say, take me as I am. I'm giving you my best. The best you can give is come straight from you. So as you put your offering together, if you look on the screen, you'll see that how to give to Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide. You can go on our website. And don't tell me, somebody says, I have to go. If you go on our website, all you have to do is see the donate button. Glory be to God. And you can pull it up. Glory be to God. I'm not going to be like a pastor friend of mine. You talk about, you know, if you guys can go to, uh, 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 what is it called? A grub, 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 grub hub and all that to get you a burger. I'm sure you can do it to give God a blessing. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. By going online. Yeah. I don't think it's not too hard to trust God. We understand <laughs> online. We're probably safer than they are. Amen. Praise God. Well, why don't you make a choice today to be a soul to see? I pray the word has been good to you, but I know God has been better. And I want you to trust in his goodness, but I want you to trust in his power. So let me pray for you right now. Father, we're honored to give seed to you today. If it wasn't for you, we, we wouldn't even have seed. You said it in your word through Paul that you give seed to the sower. So we thank you for every seed we receive, either through a secular job, through the government, through others. We thank you for the seed. And you said, as we sow this seed, you'll multiply this seed. Woohoo! And increase the fruits of our righteousness. That we have more than enough <laughs> to do the things you called us to do and to be able to be a blessing to someone else. Father, we want to be that blessing. We want to bless other people. So we thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. The worship team is going to sing, minister the song. You'll hear some announcements. We'll come back. We'll close you out. We love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm a
Yes, hello, hello. So let's look at some of the announcements that we have for everyone. Um, let's see, it looks like it's about 1139. So that means that our teen and youth church has already started. So make sure if you have a teen or a youth um, that you get them logged in. It is um, a Zoom number that you can actually find on our website. If you have, again, youth and teen that you want to attend youth church, definitely get them signed in. Also, on March 20th, our marriage um, fellowship, we will have a marriage fellowship. It's virtual and the topic or the theme, it's money and marriage. That will be March 20th at 2 p.m. And we will have the information out on the website in terms of the Zoom call and number and all of that. Um, on March 13th, we have a women's fellowship. It's virtual. Um, it will be from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. It's Kingdom Women's Fellowship. It's a virtual conference. The theme is recalibrate, reset, revive, and renew. Um, our weekly activities, every Sunday, just like you called in today, we have our Sunday service that begins at 10 a.m. Every Tuesday, we have corporate prayer that's at 1230. Every Wednesday, we have a midweek morning prayer from 6 a.m. until 6.15. And then th every Thursday, we have our online Deeper Life Bible study that begins at 7 p.m. And then every Saturday morning um, from 9 until 9.15, our men, uh, there is a Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide Men's Fellowship. It's called the Gathering Prayer Call. And again, it's every Saturday from 9 until 9.15. Definitely. Um, 
Make sure you go out to our website, wccw.org. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in terms of the day, the time, how do I access it? All that information is on our website. Additionally, if you want to get in contact with us, there's a section that says contact. Please place your name and your contact information in that section so that we can then reach out to you and hopefully help you and answer any questions that you may have. That's all for announcements today. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise his name. You know, we hope you're blessed. Been blessed today. You know what's good about this technology? You can go back and listen to the message again. Praise God. You know, that's what's good about this technology. You're not limited. You know what's blessed? You can listen free. You know, you, we have no excuse, you understand, for not receiving the word God is preaching to us at this time. When we can go back and hit reverb and hit it again, we can go back again and again and again and keep hearing. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We thank you. We praise God. Hey, we invite you out on our live services. Glory be to God. It's not that deep. It's just whether it's just whether you're ready to come and enjoy the services with us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. We, 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 we love you and we thank God for you. And we're looking to see you on Tuesday or on Wednesday morning prayer or on Thursday night Bible study. We're looking for you. You need the word more than you can even imagine. But today I'm going to believe you're going to believe in this power. We open up with some anointed praise and worship. We worship and praise him. So we're going to close out with praise and worship. So don't, don't cut us off for a moment. You, you, you just, just turn the volume up a bit. Let's just worship him. Amen. Let's just praise him a bit. Amen. Because he is so good. You know, rejoicing and giving praises is, is staying in the will of God. Giving thanks is staying in the will of God. So we thank you for joining us today. I want you to remember, you know, say this with me. I am righteous. Never forsake you. My seed will never be bread. That's why I can boldly say Satan is defeated. Darkness is dispelled. Totally for my life. Because Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. We love you. Have a blessed day.
anyone observed somebody going through and then on the third day they're miraculously recovered I've seen it happen time and time again the third day they're delivered the third day you know they're restored I've seen it time and time again what if we put our faith and trust in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ that if we go through something we it should not last no more than three days because we rise with him. We rose with him. We were di we died with him. We were, we, buried, we were buried with him. Yes. And we rise with him. Man, I'm telling you, nothing shall last no more than three days. No coronavirus uh, symptoms, no cold symptoms, no flu symptoms, no broken bones, no wounds, no broken hearts. 
I don't care what it is. <laughs> it ain't gonna last no more than three. Lazarus rose. <laughs> Jesus rose him. <laughs> huh? Three days now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey, now listen. We don't wake up, wake up, awake unto righteousness. Know that you were called by the name of the Lord on the, by the third day. Come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. We've been doing it for more than three Lord. days, and we've been awake unto righteousness. Thank Woo. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If suffering lasts more than three days. We need to start binding and loosing, using our authority. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're equipped, well equipped. Hallelujah. Christ was the example. In all things. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Like God he was he tempted in all things, but still remained sinless. Was the example in all things. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Like God, like God.